everybody. This is Kara with Sif by Kara. Um, this is Internal Cake Structures live webinar. Um, thank you for coming and joining me today. If you are watching this uh, pre-recorded, um, you watch this after we've gone live, you can always still um, ask, ask me questions. However, you're joining um, me live now. There should be a little uh, box in the window of your YouTube channel and it will say click here and join the conversation so you can click on that um, button right now and it will pull you up into a different room and then you can uh, type in a question and I'll be able to see it and answer it live for you um, again if you're watching this the pre-recorded version then just you know type a message at the bottom of the YouTube channel and um, I will do my best to answer you. I really do appreciate you um, all being here and purchasing this webinar. You're going to get a lot of great information. Um, information that cost some students several hundreds of dollars and traveling to figure out. Um, and I'm going to share that with you so hopefully you'll be able to take this knowledge and get your twenty dollars back and then some by having some really amazing, secure, you won't be scared to travel with it cakes um, that will blow your customers away and you'll be very proud of yourself. And you know, just showing you some of the basics, I'm also going to show you how to um, figure out the structure for the next cake um, by yourself. Um, I have a very special guest um, co-hosting with me today. Her name is Natalie Swanson. I hope I said that right, Natalie. You did. She's Lucy Cake Designs. Let me give you, show you a picture of Natalie. She's with Hi, Lucy everybody. Cake Designs in San Diego. And we just love oh, Natalie. She's like the nicest person ever. Oh, my God. You're so sweet. Love you guys. <laughs> Hello. Natalie, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got started with cakes. And I want to show people some of your cakes, too. I started kind of like everybody else. My I was pregnant with my daughter and didn't want to do the 90-hour weeks, 80-hour weeks, and wanted to do something that I loved and uh, be able to take work as I as I could with my daughter and make her awesome cakes. And um, four plus years later now, I've uh, I started out in um, in the Midwest in Milwaukee, Wisconsin was very fortunate to get into the higher end market, beautiful weddings um, and photo shoots with some amazing magazines, got got pretty fortunate and I work hard at it taught me and I take advantage of every online class, not being able to leave my kids now, there's two of them. I take advantage of every tutorial, every class that I could to educate myself and, and get myself um, doing better cakes. And now we're back in San Diego, so it's Lucy Cake Design San Diego. Very happy that, to be home. That is so awesome, Nellie. And I want to say that you are you do amazing cake toppers as well. And she ships, guys. So if you're not very good at cake toppers, uh, order from Natalie at Lucy Cake Designs in San Diego. I want to show you guys a cake that she, um, excuse my screen, it's going to go wonky on you in a minute, um, a cake that she did. Can you see that, Natalie? Yes. Look at that, you guys. OMG, OMG, that heart is all cake, and it's, what, 17 inches off of the cake board? It was. It was hovering. Oh, my gosh. I just think that is just genius. And um, I don't want you to tell us how to do it because you need to uh, pay. <laughs> we need to pay to <laughs> know how to do that. That is awesome. I'm going to show you the next cake she did. This was for her daughter. The other cake she did was um, this cute little rocket, how it's tilted. Oh, my gosh. You did amazing. Those Thank structures, you. Um, you make it look uh, like, oh, my God, the cake is going to fall over. I love it. They arrived safely. They arrived very safely. To we didn't have it at home. We had to travel with them, and they they arrived very safely. <laughs> wow! Not a crack or anything, huh? Not a thing. We cut, and, and I, the balloon was cut above, so it was um, it survived cutting up there. <laughs> wow! It truly is amazing work, and it's why I really Thank wanted you. you to come um, on board with. Thank you me today to you know because you know obviously oh sorry my screen went wonky 
Um, back to me. Okay, um, well, let's get started because there's a lot of uh, cake structures um, that I want to show you guys, and Natalie's going to chime in and um, help answer questions or anything like that. So, um, first thing first um, with cake structures, there's several different things that you can use, and it really sort of just depends on the cake, the style of cake. Um, the, how heavy the cake, how big the cake is going to be, um, it, it was determined what uh, what size or what tools or what pipes or whatever whatever you're going to use. So one of the things that um, we like to do, we like to go to the plumbing store. Um, <laughs> well, at Lowe's or Home Depot or your local supply store, and we like to go to the plumbing section. And some of the things that you will get really comfortable with are things like this. This is called a floor flange. Um, and what we do with these things, and uh-oh, I didn't have a cake board in front of me. Um, this is a scrap piece of wood. But let's imagine that this is your cake board, your cake display board. You can um, have cake boards cut. You can pre-order wood cake boards. I believe there's a link, and I'll have to put that under the YouTube video later, where you can get some pre-made cake uh, wooden boards. Um, or you can go to uh, your local Lowe's or Home Depot, and in the wood section, there are pre-made, pre-cut, pre-sized tabletops, round tabletops, one of which was on Natalie's cake. Um, I know you use those a lot, Natalie. A lot. So I love easy, them. Right? They're so sturdy. They're already done. They're already about the, the rounded. They look really good. They do look good. And, you know, the other thing, too, is about them is uh, they're not expensive. Oh, they're very affordable. Extremely. They're very affordable. I think one, I, I don't think I've spent more than 20 bucks on one. And I think... I think um, uh, uh, Home Depot has them for perhaps six ninety five or seven dollars. It's very affordable. Yes, like the smaller you get, I think right. I have fourteen inches, and I have one that's I think they go sixteen and eighteen, and I think they have a twenty four inch one. So oh, good. Um, yeah, so those are really easy, and you don't have to worry about knowing how to cut a perfect circle with any sort of special tool. I don't actually really use too many saws or uh, cutting devices. I try not to, so when I can um, get away with pieces that I can find already cut for me at the size that I need, that's what I go with. And um, over at Lowe's and Home Depot, you can find some nice gentlemen who will cut you. And I, I don't know if they charge per cut, but they will cut you, so if you go in there with your sizes ready to go, your lengths that you need, you can get things cut. Anywho, back to this. Floor flanges. These are absolutely great. They are a little expensive. I believe a floor flange runs about three to five dollars, maybe each. Um, however, if you're doing a cake structure, you should be charging a lot of money anyway. Right. <laughs> These are not cheap. No, no cakes really should be cheap. But you better. <laughs> You, if you're doing a cake structure where you're finding yourself at Lowe's cutting wood and getting plumbing supplies, you need to be charging. Um, so right now we're already at five dollars. Okay, <laughs> we're already now at what eight dollars for our board. So what you do is you'll take um, you'll take your flange and position um, it wherever you're going to, you know, position the cake or you need it to be, and you're going to take your, get one of these, we love them, and you're going to drill, or I should say screw, in your screw so that it is secure to your wood and you're ready to go. Now, for simple structures, um, not, not too heavy, you, you know, maybe you're going to you do the ET cake, and I'll show you guys a picture of all of those things in a minute. Um, you could just get away with using PVC pipe. Okay, PVC pipes, they're really inexpensive. They're food safe. You just got to wash them really good. Um, they come in half inch. Oh, that's tight. 
they come in half inch and three quarter. They come in all kind of sizes. Here's um, here's a three quarter inch, so it's wider, thicker. This is a half inch, and I think this is a half inch too. But they also come in smaller lengths. So what you would need too in the PVC um section is they have lots of PVC fittings. Okay, you would need one of these which screws in nicely to um, a flange. This is actually the wrong side. This is a 3 8 but they have half inch. This is a half inch uh, PVC. Yeah. Male adapter. Mail ad they, see, that's why now it's here. Male mm -hmm. adapter. You screw that in and then you Put your PVC pipe. Another tool you are going to need when working with PVC pipes is a PVC pipe cutter. They're not um, expensive. I think this one was like $12. Um, they open up. Oh, it took me forever to figure out how to use it. <laughs> so, like, anyway, there's a little latch here that keeps it closed. You can see there's a little latch here. You pop that open. And then you have to crank it up and open up that blade. You mark, measure where, however length of pipe you need. You mark it with um, a pencil. You line it up. You line it up as so. Let me see that. Let me see that. Yep, perfect. And you, you hear that clicking? Now here's the tricky part. Sometimes my cuts are not very straight, so you really have to sort of practice getting the cuts um, until you figure it out. And then you're gonna hit it, and you gotta squeeze more, <laughs> and it'll click, and you squeeze, and, you, there. and and it's gonna fall. <laughs> Hold on, it's gonna fall on me. And we got it. Now I've got a cut piece. You can cut these at any length that you need. Okay? Pretty straight, too. Say again? You made it pretty straight, too. That was a oh, straight I did, huh? I did a good job. That's important, guys. That's important. Um, not extremely important, but important. Do, do your best to get it as flush as you can. Okay. So the other tools that you need, and keep in mind, I'm going to show you guys pictures of lots of uh, structures that I've done, and you're going to see how I put all of these pieces together. But I just want to sort of give a quick overview. If, uh, if, if you've missed anything, remember, this is recorded. You can go back and watch it again. For more sturdier structures where perhaps you want your guy with a skinny arm holding up a cake and you need a really good strong structure, you're going to move on to iron piping. They come in black iron, galvanized, and something else. I think black iron is cheaper, galvanized might be, or not, one of them, one of them is more expensive than the other. It really doesn't matter as long as it's iron. Um, they come in all different sizes, actually. This one's a 5-inch, and this is how it comes. This is a 5-inch, 3 8 They even have quarter-inch. They even have, um, they have half-inch. They have, I forget, but they come very skinny. However, when you go skinnier than the 3 8 I have yet to find a floor flange smaller than a 3 8 so you might have to figure out something else as far as getting it hooked in um, to your board, and we'll talk about that too. And go to your, uh, you know, your your plumbing section and just sort of familiarize yourself, ask questions, and see. But these are some very basics that you can just hurry up and get started with. Three eighths. Uh, pipes and their fittings are actually kind of difficult to find. However, at my local orchard supply store, they had wall-to-wall -wall of every size I needed, so it was great. I know you could probably find these online and just order them and come straight to your house. These are some pipe fittings. This is a 90-degree. 
here's some nipples. And I'm, again, I'm going to show you guys how all of these work together. Um, here's a little nipple here. Here's a T. I like to use the 3 eighths because I really like a smaller stem. So if you imagine if this was a leg, how skinny that leg could be and give you the illusion of a big body elephant <laughs> standing on its tail, Ooh. you know, because it's so skinny. Um, that's why I like it. If I could figure out, you know, without, I would probably like to do like the smaller ones, like the quarter inch. However, again, it's a little difficult to find things like this or how to get it secured onto your board. Um, I couldn't find it, Kara. That's the, um, the rocket is a quarter inch, and I couldn't find a phalange for it. See? So you have to figure out what is readily available to you, your store, online. Um, so a lot of this stuff has to take in, you have to take into consideration when you are deciding upon your structure. What can you get quickly? What do you know you can find without issue? Because it's one thing you go and buy a quarter inch or a three eighths, and yet you can't find any of the fittings that you need. You can't find a 90, you can't find a 45, you can't. So you have to figure, what can I do? All of these things have to be taken into consideration, which is another reason why you need to charge more for structure. It takes time and planning. You guys better be charging. OK. Other things that you need are several different drill bits for your handy dandy power pack tool or whatever this is called. See, I, I'm a girly girl. I, I don't know about the names of these things. But your drill. See? Drill. Okay. <laughs> Love you, Natalie. So a drill, they come in these bits. I For my 3 8 I use a 11 16th drill bit. Again, I'm going to show you guys. Don't worry. I'm going to show you guys how all of these things come into play when I'm going to build my structure. What else? Oh, another thing you're going to need, especially with working with uh, the iron pipes, are these vices. You need these. Trust me. Once you get these things on, you get a fitting on here, right? And you're working with it, and you're like, oh, I need it to just turn just ever so slightly more, but it's so tight, you can't move it anymore. And sometimes you can't even get them off. And you're like, that's $15 that I can't get off. <laughs> so go and get you two $15 vices and um, have the guys at the Lowe's show you how to work with them. And basically, they will grip what you need, and you can crank those things tighter or take them off. Very important. Trust me, I was struggling, and then I got smart. Get these. Also, you will need, when working with pipes, is a Teflon tape. Very good. As you can see, I already wrapped my nipple with some Teflon tape. Um, it just helps in removing all of these uh, pieces when you want to reuse your um, fittings or other cakes, especially if you can get your structures back from your client, that's great. You know, you can reuse a lot of these pieces and you're going to show, I'm going to show you how I have. Um, I will say that I go ahead and um, add in the cost of the complete structure, so if I don't get it back, I'm not stressed about it. But if I can get it back, I've just saved myself some money. Um, okay, so I'm going to move on now. I think that with everything... That was pretty much it, sort of the basics. I'm going to go and excuse my screen as it's going to get a little wonky on us. Can you see that, Natalie? My photos? Uh oh, hold on one second. Okay. All right, so here are some, I pulled a picture from the web of some PVC um, fittings. So you can see we have a 90 degree elbow, three-way elbow, male pipe adapter, T-coupling, 90 elbow, 
So you've got all sorts of fittings that will help you um, if you're choosing to use a PVC structure. Um, this is great, Kara. Oh my goodness, that would have alleviated a lot of time at, at, the, <laughs> at the hardware store for me if I had that list. This is great. Yeah, you, you know, all I did was Google um, PVC fittings and found a, a clear picture. There's, there's probably a ton of other kind of fittings, um, but that will help you sort of when you're, you know, deciding on your structure. And here's another picture of, let me see if I can make this a little bit bigger. And these are iron pipe fittings. So this coupling cool. would be is a great one that you'll probably use a ton and a T. Um, this screw cross is going to be a good one if you want to put arms. Um, you hear, see we have the nipples here. Nipples are for like helping you connect some of these curved pieces like an elbow, the 90 and the 45 degree elbow. Um, all of these fittings are really going to help you in um, how to sort of piece your structure together to give the bones of the cake. Okay. Here's another picture of I found I thought was cool. Look at all these pipes fitted together and how it's ah. curvy. So you, you can imagine you can do so much. You can make all kind of curved things happening and arms and I mean I don't know what kind of cake that particular structure would be, but you can get an idea of how <laughs> all, the, all the fittings together sort of turn into pretty much anything you need it to turn into. So I'm going to go, let's start with a very simple structure. Let's start with my E.T. cake. So cute. He was actually very amazing. And believe it or not, very easy. So, amazing, amazing. I actually did not get a lot of pictures of my structure, but here you can see the cake has already been placed on it. I went into uh, Michael's and got this 12 inch by 12 inch um, cake board. So oh, let me go back and show you what you'll need to do with these. Where's that picture? Where's that picture? Sorry, sorry. Oh, here it is. On the bottom of your boards, you will need to put little feet to help raise your board off the ground so you can get your hands under it. And if you happen to drill into your uh, cake board, you can see right here there's a big hole. And that is for a threaded rod. In one second, I'm going to show you a threaded rod. Let me just go back. Okay, here's a threaded rod. One piece I didn't mention. This is threaded rod because it's it's threaded all the way through. And how I would like to use this, remember that big hole I just showed you? I would stick this through the hole all the way through to the other side. Remember now my board is raised up because I put little squares of feet on it. You can get these cut or buy some scrap pieces. Um, and then I'm going to take a nut and I'm going to sandwich that tight. So one on the bottom of my cake structure and then I've got my my board and then one on the top. And you tighten those really good and now you have a sturdy center rod. Okay, so that's another option. So I'm going to go back to screen share. Again, you guys, ask questions if you need to. Um, you can get them answered right away. Okay. Oops, sorry. Okay, so back to this. So that's where this little hole was. You can see how many times I've used this board. Reuse, reuse, reuse. <laughs> okay, so you need to put feet. And all I did here was actually I just used my glue gun, and I glued those suckers on, and that was easy, easy. Okay, so let's go back to my ET. So ET, I did this. You can see down here, I have feet. So what I did with him is I actually used a flange that I showed you, and I went ahead and used a PVC pipe. 
So down here on the bottom is a flange with a, a PVC male adapter, a half inch PVC pipe, another male adapter, and I took a pre-cut piece of wood that I got from Michaels and I screwed in another flange and I positioned my PVC. So there's a flange on the bottom and then there's a flange on the on the top holding up this wood base that will then hold up his head. The head could have been cake as well, although with mine it was Rice Krispie Treats. Also, here you see a copper piping and I'm going to demo what it looks like because you can't really see it. And I basically just, copper piping is also in the plumbing section. Again, just ask the guys that work there, where can I get copper piping? It is bendable, it is easy. What I did was I took a, a piece and I wrapped it around my center pole, pulled it as tight as I could, and I took my glue gun and I glued all the way around it. And then you can, for food safety purposes, you can then cover it with uh, candy melts um, or chocolate or saran wrap. And then I went ahead and I pieced my cake together and I will uh, talk about that later. This is not a demo on how to actually put cake on structure, um, but we'll talk about it and you can kind of get some idea of how to do that. Copper so is so sturdy. Co those copper arms are so sturdy. They don't go anywhere. It's expensive, but it's worth it. Copper is amazing. So worth it. Here is my guy with the cake carved, the arms positioned. Again, they're very bendable. Very easy to bend. You can also get, um, uh, what do they call it? little pliers um, to help bend and pinch if you need to pinch the ends. Um, his head was Rice Krispies, but again, you know, oh, that's what I want to say. You see how it, his head sort of curves under naturally? That's because the wood piece that I used already has that natural beveled cut and if you fill in these little crevices with ganache it just it makes for a really natural smooth transition into his head so ha right here is the wood right there and then the rest was built up with Rice Krispies but it could support cake so this could have been cake as well um, moving on and then just some quick I went ahead and used my 50-50 modeling chocolate and fondant and covered him up and added some feet. Looks and so good. So easy to cover the copper piping with um, with modeling chocolate and fondant. It was so easy. And here is my end result. <laughs> okay. Easy. That's a very easy structure. So if you can imagine using the same structure to do um, a bobblehead cake with a skinny body, because remember this this part of the cake is not supporting this head. So this head could be a huge head because that center piping is what's supporting the weight of that cake. So this could be a skinny little nothing. Covered it, and we don't even have to put cake down here. It could have just been modeling chocolate covering just the pipe, and it could have been, you know, whatever. I'm making a Christmas tree, so I'll probably use a very similar structure, and that skinny pipe will just be the trunk. How did he do for delivery, Kara? Oh my God, he was so easy. I was not nervous, not one. I was not nervous. Oh, going back, here's another reason why I'm not nervous. That is ganache. <laughs> ganache just, here's the cake. That is chocolate. My favorite chocolate cake was just the Hershey's recipe. It is not a very good cake when it comes to carving, and it, I'm telling you, it's just not. You really should use like a mud cake, but I just love this cake, and I just figure out if I can just put enough ganache on it. If I work with it cold and put enough ganache on it quickly, it all stays in place, and it does. Ganache is your friend. This could be white chocolate ganache too. So if you are doing structured cakes, I highly, highly suggest you use ganache. You don't have to use ganache, 
You could use, you know, Swiss meringue buttercream or a crusting buttercream or what, ha what have you. I will say the added security of that cake not going anywhere is because of this ganache. Okay, so let's move on to another cake, um, a little bit more difficult of a structure. Let's do this cake. Um, this cake, uh, here's the uh, picture first, <laughs> and then I turned it into cake here. Um, my structure was actually um, That's cool. quite, quite easy. Uh, what I did here is I took two, this was going to be a book, so I measured out how, you know, big the book was going to be in cake, and I had pieces of wood cut. Um, to the exact size of, 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 of one side of the book, wherever the weight of the cake was going to be. And I used um, two pin, or what are those? L brackets. L brackets. Yes, I used two L brackets and I just screwed them. And you can see the screws. Let me see, go closer. You can see the screws here. That is fine. You can see there's a lot of glue also. What I did was I then took at the right angle. So I had to see which angle I wanted the tilt to be. And I uh, drilled a hole at an angle through this wood piece, um, but only big enough so that the threaded rod could go through. Um, actually, the, the PVC pipe, too. Um, I used a nut here to stop my pipe, which is fine to use. However, the next time I would do this cake, I honestly would go ahead and put another PVC pipe on the bottom. So I highly suggest you do that. There's just an extra um, comfort in having the two pipes um, touching. They can't go through each other. Obviously, they're the same size. Uh, so I would put a PVC pipe here and not use this nut. That would be for next time. So that's why I would suggest that you do. Um, another thing you can do is you can cut your PVC pipes at an angle. And let me go back and show you. Can you see that? Yes. So I cut my PVC pipe at an angle. So if you were to drill a hole wide enough for your center rod, which would be the threaded rod on that particular structure, through the hole, but not wide enough for this to go through. So if imagine if this was the book. We've got the second piece of wood here. You've got the L brackets keeping them together. Okay. You're going to drill the hole at an angle, at the angle that you want the tilt to be. So be careful. So you'll have to hold. You can't drill flat because then when you slide it down, it's just going to sit flat. Okay? You have to drill it at an angle. So it automatically gives you an angle, uh, angled hole. So when you slide this over your center rod, and if this is also at an angle, but if the hole is not wide enough than this, then it's just going to sit. And That's all that tip. weight is going to just hold it up. Okay, so you have wood supporting the cake, okay, and giving the illusion of a book cake just floating in the middle there. But it's all being supported by your center rod, your PVC, and I cut this at an angle. So you just get your cutter out and you just... You know, you got to practice. You might, you might have to get a scrap piece of PVC and just practice cutting. <laughs> They're really, it's really cheap, so it's not, you know, you won't break the bank. Um, and you just make a good cut. But be careful when you cut this that you don't cut this too steep because a cake could really slip off. This is another approach to the topsy turvy cakes. Use a center rod. Sorry, hold on. <laughs> Dropping thing. It's live. You you center rod. You slide this over. So go when you get your center rod, go to the PVC pipe and make sure you have 
you find a PVC piping that is big enough to slide over but not too big. Okay, you just want it to be able to slide over and be as snug as you can possibly get. But there you go, it sits, and then you can put the other cake like this, and then you can then you go up and you have another. Um, oh, the cut when you cut this, when you cut this, then your other piece that you just cut will be at the other angle, right? So it sits. And that's through the second cake, and then you cut that one at an angle, and then you have your third cake, so you can just be all the way up with cake. Okay, back to... Kara, I would just say for uh, drilling at an angle, for me, I had to do a pilot hole first because I couldn't do my big drill bit at an angle and get it the way that I wanted it. I, I had to, um, I messed up a couple of pieces of wood there. So yes. drill a pilot hole first, uh, you know, a smaller one, and then go wider and wider until you get the bit that you need if it's a, if it's a larger hole. Yes, that's a very good, I, had, I agree, I had to do the same. Here is the cake. That's red velvet wow. cake. Oh my God, red velvet of all cakes. <laughs> I know. I try to please. <laughs> it's not sturdy, guys. This is amazing. This is makes it even more amazing. <laughs> yes, and his and the, and how it got even more amazing and sturdy was I could notch that sucker. <laughs> exactly. Okay. Wow. Um, also, here's my cake board. So I just used um, going back to this one. I just cut out of a regular cardboard cake the shape I needed, put it over the hole, glued it down, covered it all in fondant. Um, there's, I actually stacked my cake onto the structure. Um, I don't know why, I, that just makes sense to me. And then I took it off and stored it in the refrigerator. Here's my bucket that I made, I put, I slipped it down onto the pipe. Again, I highly suggest you use the PVC pipe there. Um, I'm definitely doing that next time. Not that this cake, this cake was fine, it just, I would just, from, you know, more sturdier structure. And here's the cake all put together in the end. And basically it's using the sort of PVC So you can see I put the PVC pipe here and I drilled a hole through this piece of wood and it sat just nice and sturdy and flush onto that PVC. I want to show you guys at Michael's, where is that picture? Oh, at Michael's, this is a beautiful thing. <laughs> they have sides, look, they even have a heart shaped here, they have a uh, sort of rectangle shape, a skinnier rectangle. They, I mean, they have all sort of sizes that you can probably figure out how to make it work for your your structure. Okay, let's move on to something. And look at these prices. Those are so affordable. Oh, yeah, let's go back and look at that. 99 cents. I think no more than, what, $3? Really? Right, the the most expensive and the largest ones. Yeah, so easy and already already perfect and already you know. What can I else? What can I'm going to show you next? And, and you know what? You can sand these guys if they're not particularly that that shape that you're hoping for. Those do really well with a sander. If you have a power sander and you just need those edges off, if it's close enough to your shape, don't go cutting wood. Just grab a sander to them, a power sander, and you can actually just kind of um, sand them down. Yeah, or or you could use ganache to fill it in. That too, make it smaller and go ganache. That's actually way less less effort. I use ganache to fill in lots of crevices and holes. That's just I love ganache. If you guys don't know that by now, um, here's let's go because we're running short on time. Here is the beginning of my sewing machine cake. Um, here's my board. I went ahead and covered it in, um, in black 
paper, uh, what construction paper or uh, cardstock paper. I used a foam core, a piece of foam core. Um, I went ahead, here's my flange. It's already screwed into the board. I, I used the same size flange to cut, to mark a hole, and then I cut that hole out. So this piece slips right over, making that flange flush. Okay? I actually used another little piece because this particular foam core was thick. So I wanted to, you know, create a little more uh, level surface. So I added another piece here just to bring up the floor flange to the actual thickness of this foam core. Okay? Is that pretty ex explains? Um, I make, I'm making, um, let's go back to this. So this piece right here is wood. And I, may, I needed to make sure that it lined up perfectly with the bottom. I actually used this piece of wood to help me cut this foam core. Now when building my structure, I had to make sure that this hole lined up perfectly with where the flange was. So in order for me to do that, I marked the flange with some, um, I think I black gel color is all I used. And then I laid perfectly, I laid it down, I pressed on it, and it left me a mark. Perfect. I didn't use that mark to drill my hole. Again, I'm only drilling a hole big enough for my center pipe, for it to fit over my center pipe snugly, but not my PVC. So I added my center pipe. This was a 3 eighths. I then um, added my PVC, and then I slipped over that piece of wood, and it just sat very nicely on top of the PVC. The PVC supported it. Here I just used some foam, um, styrofoam. Um, you could build that up with Rice Krispie treats if you wanted to. I just didn't see the point. Um, I had extra styrofoam, so I used that. And then all I did was take a dowel, a thick, a thin dowel, and I, I sharpened it on both, actually just this end, and I centered it, and I put a little glue on the on this end, and I pushed it into the styrofoam till it hit the uh, board here, and I basically sandwiched uh, this wooden dowel so that this dowel gave some support to the weight of the cake so it didn't sort of dip down on us. So it kept it very nice and flush and you can see my beautiful little uh, bubble there in the middle. So I was happy. Um, and then I built my cake up. You know, um, all of this that you see ganached is cake. I built up my uh, board here with uh, fondant to give it an, you know, an edge. So at this point, guys, you really just have to rely on your skills and, and your brain power and figure out how you're going to get the cake on. I will say if you cut your cake to the length and the squares that you need and then um, you take a little uh, circle cutter about the width of your pipe and cut a hole in the middle and then you cut that slice of cake through the middle and then you can piece the cake around the pole. That's how you can get your cake onto uh, the structure is by piecing it. Um, and I have a I can't think if I did that on my bottle cake. No I didn't do that on my bottle cake. Or you could you know you could build up you could build up your cake um, before you put this one on. Actually, I think that's what I did. I took this off, and then I started building my cake here. Once I build it all the way up, then I put this top piece on and then continued building my cake. So that's how you do the sewing machine cake, and here's the end result of that. Awesome. Um, so I want to switch gears to 
have some other ones, but I want to show you the delivery of that sewing machine, Kara. Again, so easy. It, it, I mean, I I'm telling you guys these structures. And let me just go back to myself here. These structures are. I, I'm not. I'm not even worried about. It. I'm not worried about the drive or anything. Um, it, it really is uh, amazing um, to to build the structure correctly and to put cake on it and then not sweat. I sweat more over a tiered cake than I do with these structure cakes. <laughs> I don't know. What do you think, Natalie? I I don't structure my tiered cakes this way, so that makes a lot of sense actually. <laughs> Um, but it's, it, that was kind of, I was a little bit worried about the last two cakes that I did and, uh, they actually, I had somebody who dared me to pick it up and the, the rocket and, and, and I did and it held up. It was ganache. Um, the recent football that I made was all buttercream. So when you have a structure like that, you guys do, n you don't sweat it. It was all buttercream. It was an all butter buttercream, but when you have a structure that sturdy, you have nothing to worry about. You really you, you can deliver in construction. <laughs> you really you really you you really don't. I'm going to show you guys. Um, I'm going to show you guys oh, how cool. to make a structure for this. I just found this um, picture of this Santa guy. I I have no plans on making this cake. So if anyone that wants to go ahead and do that, that would be great. Tag me. Adorable. Um, but I'm going to show you the structure for this cake. I built it. Um, so what I did was I blew it up. And I don't even think you can see my markings. They're very light. I made some pencil markings. Yeah. We can inside. You could probably use. I use pencil because I mess up. I can erase instead of wasting more paper <laughs> and more prints. Once you have it sort of what you think is going to work, you can, you know, go back with permanent marker if you need to. Um, so this, so... I figured out what my structure. So this is what you would do. So if you have someone that says, um, "I want a Hello Kitty cake," which I have been commissioned to do, um, I just found a Hello Kitty. I said, you know, picture, and I asked the girl, "Do you like this one?" She said, "Yes, great. It's a Hello Kitty on a ballerina, and she has arms out." And I'm like, I take the picture, I blow it up for myself, um, I draw what I believe would be a great structure for it. And um, I go from there. And uh, then what I do is, using my um, word, I figured out how to blow, blow him up. And I actually pieced him together. Oh. So my screen would only give me, like, the box. So I print that out. And then I move over and get his head. And then I'll get his body. And then I'll take all those pieces and I'll piece it together like a puzzle to get my full version of him with his little arm. Okay, this is just to give me an idea. So I'm going to switch cameras. One second. Switching cameras. Okay. So here's my uh -huh. structure. Where is he? He's not quite to scale because I really just used what I had on hand. Um, but you sort of get the idea here. I'm kind of covering the whole structure. So how did we do that? One, I took you know one of the uh, tabletop boards that we talked about. I have my legs on them. Okay. Um, I used a floor planch. Okay, he screwed in. Um, and so again, I was telling you that these iron pipings come in different sizes. So you can figure out what size. So I have a little one here because we're trying to get the little legs. His little legs here. Okay, can you see that? Okay. Yes. So here's his little legs. Now here's the one thing that you have to remember. You need to build up this surface with your um, with maybe foam core. So you 
Remember how I did it with the sewing machine cake? I cut out a circle, and then you'd place, so I would cut out a piece that would cover the entire surface of my board, a foam core, and then I would make sure I lined it up and I would cut out that piece so that when I put the foam core down, which I didn't do because I didn't have any at the time, it would then create a flush surface so that this, this flange is flat with the board. So now you can really hide it with, um, you know, your fondant covering his feet, what have you. Um, so what I did was I put a, uh, I didn't want to put PVC pipe here because I really want to go for that skinny leg. You see how skinny his legs are here. His legs are really skinny. Can you see that? Right. Yep. Yeah, so I really wanted to go, so if I put a PVC pipe, it's going to make them thicker, and I really want to be illusion of, oh my God, how is that fat Santa standing up on that skinny little leg? So instead of putting a PVC pipe, which would then support my piece of wood here, I went ahead and used a coupler, I think it's called. Actually, this is a T because I didn't have a coupler, but you get the idea. So I joined these two together. Because this coupler is wider, it creates a ledge, at which point my wood piece, where I cut or drill a hole, sits on that ledge. It's a little wobbly, however, if you put some ganache there or melted chocolate melts, that will help glue it in place. Also, when you're stacking your cake, the weight of the cake will help glue everything in place. So don't worry about that. So what I would do, so then what I do is I come up here. So I, again, do your measurements, guys. Do your measurements and figure out how you can work with what is available to you and, and your end result and how to get your end result. So it's a little off in scale. However, this structure I can make work and still look great, still end up looking like him. Um, so then I come up and I put a T here. Okay, I need an arm. So, well, actually, this piece is going to be hidden with cake right here. So if you can imagine, I'm going to build cake up here. This is all cake, guys. I'm going to stack my 8-inch cakes, and I'm going to carve around to give him his body. So his head is going to be up here. You know, really what I was thinking mostly that I'd probably do like a cone-shaped body. And then his beard would give you the illusion of, you know, disconnecting his body and his head. So, because he's kind of, you see, he's kind of cone-shaped. Right? Right? So that's how you do it. If you want to do a separate head, you can always just do another piece, right? And then another smaller piece of wood. So it could be another piece of wood about right here, and then you could build up a bigger head if you wanted to. So again, looking at your pictures, figuring out your structure. So we have a T, we have a smaller pipe here, and I have right here the 45 degree elbow. And now this is where is going to be his arm. His arm is right here, okay? And then his hand is right here at another 45. So we have a 45, a smaller piece of piping, and a 45. I then went ahead, because we're doing square cake boxes, I used one of my Michael's pre-sized boards. And I'm actually going to, instead of flipping it this, where the beveled edge is down, because I really want it to look like flat. I'm just going to flip it the other way and slide it down. Again, that that ledge that that nipple creates is going to keep that sturdy. I can add some ganache or some um, candy melts to help glue that in place as well if I want to. And then um, I can actually stack my stack these cakes completely separate. As long as I have, make sure I have my hole there, I have my hole through all of my cake layers, I can stack my entire present cake, and then when I'm ready to add it all together, I would just slide it on there, and we're done. So, 
here's a copper piping I was telling you about. And all I did was, I don't know if we can see that. Oh. Yeah, there we go. All I did was bend it around. Um, and I just need it long enough to go through the body of the cake and come out. Um, and because this is bendable, I can bend it down to make it look like it's more flush with this arm. And I would take my hot glue gun and glue the thickens out of it. Mm -hmm. And then at the, before I stack any cake, I'm going to, first you should wash everything. Put it together and then wrap it in saran wrap. Okay? Wrap everything in saran wrap. Saran wrap it. So this is going to stick through the cake and create another hand. Um, also, when you're stacking your cake, you also have to think about when you go to cut and serve it. So you're going to need to add some cake boards. So what I like to do is go two to three layers of cake with filling. So I would think that that would be one layer filling, two layer filling, and then I would be able to put another layer of cake right, right here, or I'd probably put a cake board. And then more filling, cake, filling, cake, filling, another board, and so forth and so on. So is that explainable? Did I explain that well, Natalie? Yes, absolutely. Okay, so that is how we use all of those spun pieces. So, you know, depending on the design of your cake and the angle of what you need, you might need a 90-degree angle. You might need... Two forty-fives together with a little nipple in the middle to connect them to give you more of a curved look. So you have to get out there. Let me switch camera. So you guys have to get out there to your Lowe's, to your Home Depot, and your plumbing department, and um, take a look around, ask questions. Um, see what is readily available, what sizes are readily, readily available to you. Um, here's a half inch size. You can see how much thicker that is with the 3 8 um, I really love the 3 8 but they're not so readily available to me at my local low, so I figured out they were at my orchard. So get online, figure out... Because it's, it's no, it doesn't make sense to get a 3 8 but you can't find any of the fittings in 3 8 You have to find the fittings with the size piping. Um, threaded rods, you can have them cut for you at your local Lowe's. Um, make sure you go in with all your measurements ready to go. What's your time? And we're almost, we're just at our end. Um, I want to show you one last thing and then we'll wrap up. Going back to, I forgot to show you guys my, this cake. That was my, oh, there it is. Wow, that's pretty My Avenger. Cool. And you can't really, because I, I had a day to put that together. You can see the end result. I, I give the illusion of the fist holding up the Avenger sign. Um, I actually did not need really this other fist. However, I needed something to just sort of shimmy up this end of the cake because the cake itself was so heavy it sort of dipped down a little bit and we created that uneven eyesore that I just couldn't stand. Here, don't mind my messy kitchen in the back. Here is the cake. You can see there's nothing here. That is a PVC pipe straight up. So I was kissing that edge. <laughs> <laughs> I went across and I came down, I put a flange in onto this piece of wood. And that piece of wood was held up by a flange. And then right here in the middle, so I've actually joined these two pieces with a T, and then I put a pipe going up here. 
So that is how I did that. Um, so you can see if we were to draw this in, it would be a PVC pipe, a 90, a nipple, a T, a nipple, a 90, a small nipple into a flange. And then over here at this top of the T, I just put a long um, iron piece, a longer iron piece. And that's it. And all I did here on the fist is I just shimmied really tightly a piece of PVC pipe and then I and then I decorated it with to look like the other fist. So all in the illusion and all tricks. Um I hope I answered I hope. everything. Let me go back to and I don't see any questions. So hopefully you guys weren't asking me and I just didn't see I didn't see anything in chat either. So uh, that's it, guys. Um, you can go back and rewatch this. So if you didn't quite understand the first time around. I'm sure if you go back and rewatch it a few times, you might um, understand. I would say practice. Go online, um, find something sort of cool, or draw up something really cool, and then um, decide how you would structure that, and then go buy all the pieces. Um, it is a, it's costly, but I want you to go buy it so that you can see how much you're going to pay, <laughs> how much you paid for all of this, um, so you can see how much you should charge. I will say, um, if someone wants a cake like that and it's to serve about 50 people, I automatically am charging $200 for the structure. $200. It's going to probably cost me about $60, $50 in supplies, and it's going to take me another two to three hours in figuring it out and putting it together. So that's why it's $200. Um, that's it. Uh, did I miss anything, Natalie? Let's say, say hi to Natalie. I I don't I, I don't think you did. Um, and maybe one question to touch on is, um, and I get that a lot, what about, I mean, do you want to build those cakes for big, big parties? Do you just build it up even larger? Do you add maybe a sheet under or if somebody wants it for 150 or 80 people, um, <laughs> you know, um, I, I love my, those kind of cakes to feed about 30 to 40. You're more, you're braver than I am if you're going 50 or more. Um, well, I will say that, you know, you could definitely Build it as big as you have room to store it. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very good point. That's where you go. So if you get a big bakery with a big, you know, built-in walk-in refrigerator freezer, you can build it as big as you can store it and as big as you can get it delivered, carry, ship it, whatever. Once you the, once you build this structure with using these irons, that cake is not going anywhere. It'll just be heavy right. and a little awkward. But it's not going anywhere. So um, if you guys need to know, I will tell you, um, if you can't figure out how to sort of build a cake onto structures, I will say my Trick Fairies Craftsy class is really good class. It's where I learned actually a lot of how to put the cake onto the structure. Um, Liz Merrick has free video on how to build up Rice Krispies onto your structure, which is really great. And also her 50-50 uh, modeling, I don't know if it's hers, but the idea of 50-50 modeling chocolate with um, fondant is really great when you're trying to cover those sort of structures because of seams. You can sort of piece it on and smooth out the seams. Um, I, those are really the um, only two, I think, if you, if you really need more help. Um, figure out how to now build the cake onto your structure. Those are really the only two that you really need. Um, and then um, you revisit this tutorial as to figuring out what pieces and how to sort of draw it out. But again, I hope that I've answered your questions. I hope that you have enjoyed this uh, tutorial. Um, leave me a question if you, you know, uh, underneath the YouTube video, save the link that was in your PDF file. You'll need it to come back to rewatch this uh, class. 
And if anyone is interested in learning about structure, please send them the link to purchase this class. And uh, till next time, let's say goodbye to Natalie for joining us. Bye, guys. And maybe nice Natalie will show here. us how to make that heart cake float above with the curve. You got it. <laughs> we're going to work on you, Natalie. Thanks for joining me today. I really Thank appreciate you. it. Thank you. This was great. Very comprehensive. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, guys, we're going to go. i got to go be mommy now and take my daughter to school. So thanks again. Until next time, take care. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.